good evening my today's topic is from your class 8th book that is microbial world that means today we will learn about the microorganisms their characteristics their uh, speciality we will learn about all this in uh, our surrounding world you must have seen that there are uh, the living organisms of various shapes and forms and size in our surrounding you can find a huge elephant and uh, the small tiny ants and termites also that means the size and shape varies in our surrounding there are some more tiny part uh, living organism in our surroundings they are so tiny that you can't see them with your unaided eyes that means without the help of anything you can't see with your eyes unaided eyes naked eyes those tiny organisms are known as microorganisms or microbes or microbes okay and we have to see these microorganisms with the help of microscope the study of these microorganisms are known as microbiology and the study of and the scientists who study this uh, microbiology are known as microbiologists are known as microbiologists so what we have learned that in our surrounding there are so tiny living organisms which we can't see with our unaided eyes we need microscope to see those tiny organisms and the study of those tiny organisms are known as microbiology and uh, the scientists who are doing this study are known as microbiologists now let's move on to the characteristics of microbes characteristics of these microbes what are the main characteristics of these microbes first of all the first characteristics of microbes are you can find uh, these uh, microorganism everywhere everywhere in this earth uh, maybe it can be found in your tables in your uh, uh, study table in your hand in your uh, books in your pencil pencil box everywhere you can find them but the uh, factor which is uh, very surprising that we can't see them with our unaided eyes we need microscope if we have microscope and if you focus on your hand you can see that there are numerous microorganisms in your hands so they can be found everywhere okay now second characteristics of microorganism is they can live either single or in colonies they can live either single or in colonies third they can withstand the adverse atmospheric condition they can withstand the adverse atmospheric conditions adverse atmospheric condition means so much heat or so much cold 
they can withstand we can't we can't live uh, in polar region we need some uh, precautions to live in polar region but microorganism can live in ice cold frozen area they can live in boiling spring water so microorganisms can withstand all the adverse atmospheric condition they can uh, be found in dry desert they can be found in moist area also that means it has that capability to withstand the adverse atmospheric condition now you must be uh, uh, thinking that how how can it be possible they actually make one outer covering around them which is known as cyst and they live inside that cyst and become inactive in that adverse atmospheric condition and then when the condition uh, will be uh, favorable they they will come out from that covering that is why they with can withstand this uh, extreme atmospheric conditions so we have uh, discussed about four characteristics of microorganism first they can be found everywhere they can live either single or in colonies third they can uh, withstand the atmospheric adverse atmospheric condition fourth they form the outer covering of cyst around them and live inside in the adverse atmospheric condition to withstand that and after that when the atmospheric atmospheric condition is favorable they can come out from that now uh, let's move on to the next topic types of microorganisms types of microorganisms so what are the types of microorganism we have bacteria first okay next fungi next protozoa next protozoa after bacteria we have algae actually algae fungi protozoa and last but not the least virus these are the five main types of microorganisms today we will discuss about all of them so listen very carefully it is very important for your core study so uh, first of all we have bacteria bacteria is a uh, very uh, famous microorganism you can find it you can find it everywhere anywhere around us and they are mostly single celled or unicellular single celled that means they are made up of with single cell and they can live either single or in colonies all together so uh, if i discuss about bacteria first point is they are unicellular they can live either single or in uh, colonies or in colonies and they can be harmful and as well as harmless or useful also and 
why they are harmful because they cause diseases why they are harmful because they cause diseases that is why bacteria is either harmful or harmless okay so so these three are the main characteristics of bacteria now bacteria can be classified into four categories according to the shape bacteria can be classified into four categories according to shape what are they first is coccus first is coccus they are uh, like this round shaped okay they are coccus second one is they are uh, rod shaped rod shaped third one is comma shaped and fourth one is spiral shaped first is coccus they are round shaped second rod shaped third comma shaped and fourth spirillum or spiral shaped with the name you can have that uh, coccus are round shaped rod shaped like this okay comma shaped like this and spirillum like this okay so these are the four main types of bacteria according to the shape according to the shape so uh, first uh, microorganism that we are discussing is bacteria we have said that they are unicellular generally they can live a uh, single uh, or they can live in colonies together okay they can be harmful and harmless at the uh, harmless either harmful or harmless why harmful because they can cause diseases in our body okay now let's move on to second type that is algae that is algae the second type is algae now algae is a very special type of uh, microorganism they are green in color algae's special characteristic is that they are green in color and when uh, it is green in color you can easily say that it can do photosynthesis because they are having chlorophyll you must have learned that why why uh, autotrophic plants can make food because they are having chlorophyll in them the green pigment which helps them to make their food to attract the sunlight through which they can do the photosynthesis procedure by which they can make their food similarly algae is having green pigment chlorophyll that is why algae can do the photosynthesis and algae can be classified into again two parts micro algae and macro algae micro and macro now uh, with the name itself you can understand that micro means very small and macro means larger than the micro 
a little bit larger it can't be very large because they are microorganisms already they are very skinny we know that we can see them only through microscope there are some uh, examples of algae are volvox volvox Chlamydomonas, diatom, spirogyra, they are some very common examples of algae and fucus and fucus these are some very common examples of algae now as i have written here spirogyra spirogyra is actually the filamental algae filamental like this they can make chains of spirogyra okay so spirogyra is filamentous algae so we have discussed two microorganisms already one is bacteria second is algae now let's move on to fungi let's move on to fungi okay now let's have one quick recap so that you can uh, remember it memorize it easily first of all we have learned what is microorganism they are tiny organism which we can't see with unaided eyes only through microscope we can see them and the study of microorganisms is known as uh, microbiology and the scientists who are doing this they are known as microbiologists then we have come to the characteristics of microorganisms we have seen that they can be found in everywhere they can withstand the adverse atmospheric condition they can live single or uh, in colonies together and fourth uh, you have learned that how they withstand the adverse atmospheric condition they make the cyst around them and inside them they become inactive that is that is the way how they can withstand the adverse atmospheric condition next we have learned about bacteria the first microorganism that is uh, bacteria you have learned that that is unicellular they can be harmful they can be harmless they can either uh, leave singly or uh, in colonies together in bacteria we have learned uh, there are four types of bacteria according to their shape one is coccus then comma shaped then rod shaped and last one is spirillum that is spiral shaped next we have learned about algae and we have known the fact is that algae is having the green pigment chlorophyll that is why it is green in color and it can do the photosynthesis and in algae also you have learned that there are two types microalgae and macroalgae there are some example i have given volvox diatom spirogyra fucus and chlamydomonas they are algae now we are moving towards the next microorganism that is fungi now what is fungi let's uh, discuss about one experiment you have bread in your house have one piece of slice of bread and uh, pour some water uh, just sprinkle some water in a particular portion of that bread and 
keep it inside a plastic and keep it in a warm place after one or two days you can find that the portion where you have sprinkled the water you can see one grayish color over there that grayish color is for the fungal growth in that uh, bread and the bread is spoiled that fungal growth is actually fungi which is uh, having the growth in that portion if you uh, see that bread under the microscope you can find such structure you can find such branched structure in that grayish color this is actually the fungal growth now this portion is known as high fee high fee so as i uh, told you that if you uh, see the spoiled bread which is having the fungal growth you can see the structure of fungi which is having a branch structure this portion is known as hyphae secondly fungi is having one very interesting characteristics as you have learned that algae is having green pigment algae is having green pigment in it that is why they are autotrophic but just fungi is having just opposite characteristics they don't have chlorophyll that is why they can't perform photosynthesis and fungi is basically known as thread like structure you can see that it is actually thread like structures so they can't uh, perform photosynthesis they can be unicellular or multicellular fungi can be unicellular or multicellular and it can be found generally in warm and moist places in warm and moist places and fungi uh, is having heterotrophic and saprophytic Uh, or parasitic nutrition now i have mentioned three names heterotrophic heterotrophic saprophytic and parasitic let's discuss this three first heterotrophic that means it is dependent on the other uh, living organisms for food that is why heterotrophic because it is not having the chlorophyll if it will be having the chlorophyll it will be autotrophic but it is not having chlorophyll that is why it is heterotrophic then we have saprophytic what does that mean saprophyte nutrition you must have learned in 6th uh, or 7th class but again i am discussing saprophytic means the uh, in this nutrition in this nutrition organisms are having nutrition from the dead plants and animals they grow on the dead plants and animals and they have the nutrition from that dead plant and animals last one is parasitic what is parasite parasites are those which uh, live in a host body and take all the nutrition of that host body they can take all the nutrition of the host body 
like uh, roundworm, tapeworm, they live in our stomach and they take all the nutrition of our body. They are growing in our body by the nutrition which we are taking. They are taking that nutrition wholly and we are lacking that nutrition. That means they are damaging, they are harmful. That is parasite which damage the host body, which damage, which harms the host body. So, fungi is like that. They are heterotropic, they are saprophytic and also parasitic. Fungi is like that. Now, let's have some examples of fungi. What are they? Examples of fungi. First is yeast, then agaricus. Now agaricus is actually mushroom. You must have seen the structure is like this. Mushrooms. Okay. Agaricus is mushroom. This is agaricus. Then we are having rhizopus. This is like this as I have drawn before. This is the hyphae like structure in rhizopus. Okay. This is porangium. And in yeast you can have such structure. This is yeast. Okay. This is yeast. This is agaricus. This is rhizopus. And last but not the least is penicillium. Penicillium. That is like this. This is the structure of penicillium. So we are having four examples of fungi. Okay. Now let's have one recap about fungi. Fungi is lacking the chlorophyll. That is why it can't, it can't do photosynthesis. Okay. Secondly, we have learned that they are having three types of nutrition, heterotropic, saprophytic and parasitic also. We are having uh, the, it can be unicellular, it can be multicellular. We are having some examples, yeast, agaricus, rhizopus and penicillium. Okay. Now, we have covered the three uh, microorganisms already. What are they? Bacteria, algae and fungi. Now let's move on to protozoa. Let's move on to protozoa. Okay. Let's move on to protozoa. Now, uh, what is protozoa? They are uh, unicellular uh, microscopic organisms similar to animals. Protozoans are actually showing the characteristics of animals. Okay. How? How they uh, show the characteristics of animals? They can move. Till now I have uh, discussed about some microorganism. They can't move but protozoa can move. They can uh, have reproduction. They can have other life processes. That is why protozoa is actually behaving like what? Animals. So protozoa is behaving like animals 
ओके बिहेविंग लाइक एनिमल्स एंड द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ प्रोटोजोआ इज प्लाजमोडियम Plasmodium is a very famous pro protozoa and also trypanosoma trypanosoma and trypanosoma and amoeba Plasmodium trypanosoma and amoeba they are the main uh, examples of protozoa which is which are very famous protozoa can be aquatic they are mainly aquatic in nature okay they are mainly aquatic mostly aquatic in nature so pro main characteristic of protozoa is that they uh, behave like animals and the examples of protozoa are plasmodium trypanosoma and amoeba plasmodium look like this okay these are cell structure okay this is plasmodium this is trypanosoma like this and amoeba is like this so this is amoeba this is trypanosoma and this is plasmodium okay so this is all about protozoa let's uh, move on to viruses before moving on to viruses let's have recap bacteria algae fungi and protozoa after that there is a group types of microorganism that is known as viruses this is very famous microorganism most of you are uh, suffering sometimes often suffering from fever or flu or common cold that is due to virus virus is having very special characteristics that is when it is uh, inside the host body it uh, behaves like a living organism and when outside the host body it behaves like non living you can see both the characteristics in virus that means they can be living as well as they can be non living now how non living uh, they uh, couldn't perform the life processes then they will be non living and when they perform the life processes that is living okay so in uh, science the scientist uh, often say that virus is the border of living and non living evolution that is why it is having both the characters living and non living now virus can cause diseases both in plants and animals so what we have learned about virus that it can it shows living as well as non living okay this is the special characteristics of a virus now virus can cause diseases in plants and animals and even in virus itself also how in animals we are having flu virus polio virus conjunctivitis virus so these are the virus which can cause the harm or disease in animal body all to us 
and in plant you can see the potato is having the disease due to which there is black color in potato that is tobacco mosaic virus tobacco mosaic virus that is causing harm to a plant and in virus also there is a virus that is called bacteriophage which causes harm or damage in virus itself that is known as bacteriophage so in animal common flu common cold okay these are virus caused diseases in plant in potato tobacco mosaic virus tobacco mosaic virus and in bacteria in uh, virus it can uh, cause diseases virus also or uh, sorry bacteria also it can cause diseases in bacteria also that virus is known as bacteriophage so this is the microorganism which can cause the disease to the another microorganism that is bacteria a uh, little second before a uh, few seconds before i have uh, said that it caused diseases to virus that is wrong actually i said it wrongly it causes diseases to bacteria the another microorganism so it is living as well as non living in animal it is causing some diseases like flu common cold fever in plant tobacco mosaic virus which is uh, giving the disease to the potato and in bacteria bacteriophage so this is all about bacteria okay so we have learned today about the types of microorganisms that is bacteria algae fungi protozoa and virus among them the only uh, green uh, microorganism is algae which can do photosynthesis and the microorganism which can show the both characteristics living and non living is is virus that is why scientist uh, often told that virus is actually at the border of evolution of living and non living okay next we have fungi in uh, this list which is not having any chlorophyll okay and they are having thread like structures and in protozoa we have seen that they behave like animals they can move around they can move around so protozoa is having the behaving like animals and the first microorganism that we have discussed is bacteria we have learned that they can live singly or in colonies and they can they can uh, harm as well as they can help also there are some shapes of bacteria according to the shapes we have divided the bacteria in four classes another point that we have missed that we can see virus through micro uh, electron microscope only the other microorganisms we can see the normal by normal microscope but virus 
type of virus we should use the electron microscope so this is all about the microorganisms and the microbial world which are the teeny organisms living organism which we can't see with unaided eyes we have to use the microscope to see these organisms and the types of main types of microorganisms are of five types they are uh, bacteria algae fungi protozoa and viruses we have mentioned the examples also you have to learn the examples very uh, very nicely so that you can write the names because the names are very typical so you have to learn it by heart and practice it regularly so that you can write it in your exam uh, i think you can do that so this much for today's session thank you and have a nice day